All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. That's right, folks, the wrestling Jesus live by himself there on the wrestling juggernauts channel, ladies and gentlemen. But voice, before I start there, folks, I uploaded my predictions video on the new Wrestling Jesus channel. I think I put a link in the description here on the stream yard. This is all a big test for me, folks. Big test there. Um, so, yeah, predictions are posted on my Wrestling Jesus channel. In a couple of days, I'm going to be uh, allowed or whatever to go live on that account there. So. If, you, if you're a fan of the wrestling Jesus there, check that out. I'm not going to close the page after a week or whatever. You're going to get some quality wrestling Jesus material on there, some live shows. I just got to wait a few days to go live or whatever. And we got <laughs> Reese Humphreys in the chat there. All righty, as they say. Live viewer comment, show up on StreamYard. Click on the comment to show on screen. Show. Chris Humphreys. Hide. There you go. Push Griff Garrison. We got the Hoots podcast. Outlaw Mud Show pay-per-view tonight. Yes. We got X9. IVT 901, all righty there. We got, it's the Costanza in the house, folks. Costanza there, Piccolo, never going to give you up. Never going to let you down there. Robert Hurd, Britt Baker wins tonight. I hope so there. Jeremiah Jared, what's up, WJ? Um, I'm about to do... Jeremiah, what we used to call a, a pay-per-view preview there, where we simply talk about match quality or whatever. Rice Humphreys, let's get nuts, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get fucking nuts here. So, Serena Deeb versus Rio in the pre-show there. Um, I'm expecting an okay wrestling women's match out of this, I guess. Serena Deeb, she's an okay wrestler there. Um, the indie fans, they respect her, folks, because she got her head shaved by CM Punk or whatever. But um, It should be an okay. Uh, sorry, the dog sounds like he's puking right next to me there, but he's fine, folks. Um, what was I going to fucking say there? Um, it should be an okay, slow, low quali quality match that's going to turn out to be all right or whatever. Um, we got Schwartz Center in the house, folks. WJ won Smart Buster Mania last night. There. All right, the first match of the official card there. Hangman Page versus Brian Cage. Um, this should be a decent match, I guess. They're smaller guy versus big guy. Um, Hangman Page, do I think he should be viewed as the next big thing? Like AEW fans try to present him, he's the next big fucking champ or whatever. I don't take him serious at that level, you know what I mean? But I think he's a decent wrestler kind of deal there. Brian Cage, he's just a big beast, ladies and gentlemen. I like Cage there. I don't like the Wolverine bullshit, you know what I mean? But he's a big dude. He does some dangerous-looking moves to the small guys, so this could potentially be a decent match. Brian Cage can throw him around. Hangman Page can do a couple things there, so it could possibly be okay there. 
Cody Rhodes versus Antonia Gogo. Um, I think this is going to be like a weird, awkward match there. So a go-go, it's a thing that he punches people in the stomach. He's a boxer. So Cody Rhodes, he's, you know, going to avoid the punches. He's going to try to make himself look like an athlete, shit like this. So I think this is going to be like just a fucking weird match. You know what I mean? X9, 1IV, T901. I like Team Taz. Yeah, I like a cut like a few. I like Taz cutting promos when he buries the wrestlers. I like Brian Cage. I don't see Ricky Starks as the next rock. Like, I got nothing against Ricky Starks there, but you put him, uh, you know, in the same category as the rock there. It's pretty fucking. Uh, a pretty tough fucking thing for him, you know what I mean? Let's let's take a small skinny jobber and compare him to one of the biggest wrestlers of all time. Like that doesn't do him any favors, you know what I mean? Spectral MK in the house there, Piccolo. Ricky Starks is a midget. Uh, Rice some freeze. He's a good promo, but too small. That's pretty much it there. Uh, Sting and Darby Allen versus Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Pfft. It should be an okay little tag team match, I guess, where 60-year-old man Sting is going to dominate a couple of young talents or whatever there. And Darby Allen's going to do his goofy fucking cringy stuff like his coffin drop or whatever. Like the coffin drop, it doesn't look like it could hurt anybody. Fuck like the guy's fucking like a hundred pound. He drops off the turnbuckles, turnbuckles like fucking three feet off the ground. There is, is that really, could that really knock somebody out? Like, and it should be an okay little match, I guess. Hopefully Sting doesn't get hurt because it's not, uh, you know, it's not like a fucking, uh, what do they call it? Cinematic match. It's a real match. So let's just hope he doesn't get hurt in this there. The Casino Battle Royal, folks. Um, like I said in my predictions there over on the new Wrestling Jesus channel there, um, you got Christian Cage and Matt Hardy. Those are the only two names because the winner gets a, a shot at the world title. So Matt Hardy's too old to win, like... And Christian already had some type of face-to-face -face with Kenny Omega. So I'm thinking Christian wins here, there. But uh, like it should be like a little goofy battle royal there with their little goofy shit in there. And some little comedy spots and different stuff there. But. It should be, like, I wouldn't say enjoyable, but uh, it should be okay to sit and watch, I guess. Stadium Stampede, Inner Circle versus uh, the Pinnacle. Basically a big gimmick, uh, hardcore match there. Kyabolical, I feel bad for Sting, yes. So do I, folks. Being presented in a weird light there. Like when Sting comes out, I for some reason, I feel like, ah, 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 I have a feeling like this now. Back in the day as a kid, I would have fucking been over the moon to see Sting come out. You know what I mean? Even when he appeared in WWE, I was marking out like a fanboy for Sting the first time. I've been watching Sting for 30 years. For some reason, he comes out in AEW, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, not again with this shit. You know what I mean? So, 
um, stadium stampede. It's going to be basically like a fucking big, goofy, hardcore match on Raw there when they had these teamed fucking hardcore matches. That's basically what it is. It's a big... 30 minute long team, the fucking football hardcore match. You know what I mean? You get some so called funny spots. You might get some dangerous looking spots. Somebody might get killed. You know what I mean? So, like, matches like this, you can be split. Some people like it because it's hardcore, but, you know, just because something is hardcore, you, you know, like last year, their big spot was the golf cart. Sammy Guevara gets hit by the golf cart. That's something they ripped off from WWE, the golf cart. It was done before, you know what I mean? But um, like, it's hard to judge. It's probably going to be a big, goofy, fucking silly, hardcore match there. The AEW fans will say it's the best. Most people are just going to, like, think it's cringy there, but we'll see how it comes out. Uh, probably a mix of both. Dangerous, cringy stuff there. The Bucks versus Moxley and Kingston. Um, for some reason, I'm thinking this might turn out to be okay kind of deal if it's a regular match, if it's a Young Bucks kind of match. If they try to wrestle a Young Bucks match, then it's going to be shit. But I don't think Moxley would allow them to pull this kind of shit. You know what I mean? And fucking, like, I can't see Moxley... Dean Ambrose, former WWE champ, getting beat by these two fucking clowns. You know what I mean? But it's AEW and they have power. They have control. You know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping it's like a match where they meet somewhere down the middle. What I'm hoping is that Kingston and Moxley beat their fucking ass. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for there. But like, you know, the Young Bucks are probably going to win there, but I'm hoping Moxley and Kingston win. And, like, it's hard to judge. Will it be a Bucks match? Is it going to be more of a hardcore Moxley thing? Probably, again, a mix of both. Eddie Kingston with his weird unorthodox style or whatever. Um, I'm thinking it, it's going to be okay slash disgusting. You know, you might get some okay stuff coming from Moxley and Kingston. And you're going to get some cringe material from the Bucks with their goofy comedy and stupid shit. You know what I mean? So it would probably be okay, but the Bucks is probably going to fuck things up. You know, that's what I think there. Miro versus Lance Archer, probably a big, boring, big man match or whatever. Uh, ruthless Aggression Gamer, Mox's Wild Thing team needs to go. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cringy, you know what I mean? The, <laughs> the Wild Thing team. Like, I understand he's supposed to be a hardcore guy. He's supposed to be an edgy guy or whatever. But when he comes out to Wild Thing, it's just pure fucking cringe. You know what I mean? And Wild Thing, that's like the song of fucking, uh, what's his name there, Charlie, in that baseball movie or whatever there. Can't remember his freaking name right now. They're winning, winning, whatever the fuck his name is there. Uh, Charlie Sheen, there you go, fuck. So people know Charlie Sheen with Wild Thing. When he comes out uh, with his cringy faces and stuff, and I want to fucking... I said something in my predictions. I said that Moxley and Kingston are a bit funny or whatever there. Um, just to clarify, 
Eddie Kingston is the funny one. Mox Lee is fucking bland. Like, it is what it is there. He's, a, he's fucking bland. Kingston is a little funny. Like, when Kingston first came on the scene, AEW fans were saying he's the best talker. He's the best heel of all time. Obviously, it's not, it's unacceptable for me. I hear this. I grew up. I've seen so many good promo cutters, so many good heels. So when they say, you know, Eddie Kingston, the best heel of all time, obviously, I'm going to fucking puke when I hear this shit. But Eddie Kingston on his own, like without the fucking indie fans doing their overhype shit, which kills everything they fucking try to promote or whatever there. Eddie Kingston on his own, I think he's funny a bit. You know what I mean? He's not hilarious, but he's a bit funny. He can talk. Is he championship material? Fuck no there, but he can talk. You know what I mean? He could win the TNT title, you know? Um... Now, where the fuck was I there? Miro, Lance Archer, just a big, boring match between two big guys there. Jake the Snake gets involved. Maybe Miro punches Jake the Snake, something like this. A distraction. Miro gets the win. I don't know there. Um, Lance Archer, he's big, but he just doesn't have it. You know what I mean? He's big, but like, like he seems too goofy kind of deal. Sheeta versus Britt Baker. Hikaru Sheeta versus Britt Baker. Um, I think it's Britt Baker's time to win. You know what I mean? Um, Britt Baker needs to win this thing. She can talk, stuff like this there. Um, Hikaru Shida, I, I, I like her, you know, she because she seems friendly. She's cute or whatever. She presented herself well as the champ, you know what I mean? But uh, it's time for her to drop the belt to Britt Baker, you know what I mean? Britt Baker can talk. She should have won the belt way before fucking Nyla Rose and all of that fucking junk. You know what I mean? Um, do I think this is going to be a good match? Probably not there. I like both of these women, but they're not the greatest wrestlers of all time. You know, They're both okay. They can pull off a good match or a decent match maybe. But it's not going to be like fucking Charlotte versus Sasha Banks or something like this, you know, because they're not at that level yet. But it should be an OK fucking little match, I imagine there. Uh, OK slash uh, piss break, but I, I like them both. So it should be OK kind of deal. I don't know. Omega versus Pac versus Orange Cassidy there. Um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be Kenny Omega. You know what I mean? People say he's the greatest wrestler, but it's hard not to see the stuff that Jim Cornette pointed out. You know, the jazz hands, the goofiness, the twinkle toes. You know what I mean? Once Jim Cornette explains it and you see it, it's like you can't go back after. But even before I've seen, even before I heard Cornette talking about him, when I was watching some of the New Japan stuff that was being overhyped there, like I don't see Kenny as a real believable star. He just seems too goofy. The faces and the fucking nonstop knees and like he just tries to wrestle like a Japanese guy. I get it. You know, if you're an indie fan, Dave Meltzer told you that strong style is the, the best style. Kenny tries to wrestle the strong style. So you're duped 
into thinking that he's amazing. In reality, strong style ain't making money that much. If it was, you know, there would be strong style promotions in the States. People would care about New Japan in the States if it was really that entertaining. <clears throat> Watching Japanese guys just doing knee strike and German suplex the entire match with weird chops and weird kick and stuff. A nail bow to the back of the head ends in a one, two, three. Like to me, that's weird, fucking goofy wrestling. It's not real wrestling that's entertaining me personally. Just because Kenny wrestles a weird style. To me personally, that don't make him the best. It don't make him good. I think he's a cringy motherfucker. Yes, he's athletic. He can jump. He can run. He can, you know, that's pretty much it there. But uh, like he doesn't seem like a real wrestler that's selling and building up a, a move and it's just goofy shit and, and indie fans jacking off to everything he does. In reality, he's not that good, I think. He can run and jump and, and do a couple of indie moves. A oh, Tiger Driver 98! Anybody can lift a guy and do a pile driver. They can all do that shit. You know what I mean? Just because they all back him as the supposed best don't mean his matches are the best. So, so yeah, that's Kenny. Then there's Pac, 205 Live Midget. And then there's Orange Cassidy, comedy wrestler. So, basically, it's like a big fucking mix of shit, this match. It's going to be... A big mix of shit. Kenny's going to try hard to look like the best in the world. And then there's Pac, who wants to show that he's the best midget in the world. And then Orange Cassidy shows up with his hands in his pocket and does goofy shit. What kind of fucking match can you have? This going to be a weird match. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be a weird match. It might be an okay match. It might turn out to be okay, but then there's no way this can turn out to be a big classic match. Maybe in Dave Meltzer's mind there, but uh, probably not in anybody else's. You know what I mean? Rice Humphreys, AW goes out of business. Marks, well, the ratings don't matter, uh, Jack Midget, Piccolo says, versus Jobber in jeans and glasses versus Spaghetti Hair Man. It's just a weird mesh of styles kind of deal. Like, the only thing they're missing here is a fucking bocce luchador to have a complete fuck, fucking uh, too many cooks spoil the broth kind of match. You know what I mean? But... I think it's going to be an okay, an all right match there. Is it going to be as good as they claim? No, it's going to be a, just a fucking a mix of all kind of fucking bullshit or whatever there. Five star general, twinkle toes versus pockets. Big lazy. It doesn't even look like a world title match. Fuck no. Fuck no. This is a match that should be on dark or whatever. Um, Ronald Murray, will Jericho go through cardboard again tonight? He might, folks, he might. Uh, looks like a TNT title match, pretty much. <clears throat> In what world is this heavyweight title material? Orange Cassidy and Pac, like this is insane, like. And it looks like overall the fans, a big portion of the fans, even some AEW fans, are starting to admit that Kenny, as the heavyweight champ, is a failed experiment. You know what I mean? Pac was added to this match because Omega versus Pockets wasn't good enough, says Ruthless Aggression Gamer. It's possible. 
Or maybe Pac is too dry on his own. I don't fucking know what the... Spectral MK Omega is also the same guy who puts his fingers up under men's ass. Apparently he does that. There's some kind of indie match. It's a guy with his pants down. Omega with his fingers inside the, the guy's ass. You know what I mean? In what world do we take this seriously? Some shit like this. You know what I mean? In what world do we take this serious? You can't. A guy puts his hand in someone else's ass. Where And where is this wrestling? Like, And these guys, it's all about hating the better wrestlers of the past. Oh, Hogan suck. You know, tell me where Hogan was in a wrestling match putting his hands inside of another man's rectum. In which match did you see Hogan do this? You know what I mean? It's pathetic there. Rice, I'm free. Pull my finger. Kyabolical Shaq for AEW World Champion there. Five-star general Tony Khan scared of Nick Khan. I talked about this there on the new wrestling jesus channel there like tony khan it's embarrassing going online with shit like this you know what i mean very embarrassing like peter spence chris benoit can come back from the dead and be a more likable champ than kenny omega even after what Benoit did, he probably still has more legit fans than what Benoit, than what Kenny Omega has. You know what I mean? There's still a portion of the audience that wants Benoit in the main event or in the, the Hall of Fame, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Randy Orton better than Kenny Omega says Spectral. Yes, I fully agree with this there. Monsieur Miz, Tony Khan made me not want to wear aviator glasses ever again there. I don't know really much about aviator glasses there, but his video was pretty fucking embarrassing uh, also, Jim Ross, ver better than Kenny Omega. Jim Ross knows what he's doing. And Ross talked about this again there recently. He says people react. I'm paraphrasing. I just read this like three, four hours ago there. Um, Ross says people are acting like I insulted Kenny uh, like, if I dissed him, I wasn't doing that. And it's a shame that Jim Ross, 40 years of experience, a wrestling mind who, who fucking scouted and brought us a, a ton of great wrestlers. It's a shame that Jim Ross, best announcer of all time, can't voice his opinion nowadays in the so-called world of modern wrestling. Like... The fuck is that? Like, that Kenny Omega, he assumes that, like, it's like a legit fact that he's the, the best in the world and everybody has to bow down to him, even Jim Ross. And Jim Ross ain't a wrestling fan there. He's a real fucking wrestling person who knows what the fuck he's talking about. It's a shame. That Kenny thinks he's so high and mighty that even Jim Ross has to bow down to him at that level. It's a fucking joke and a half, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, basically Ross says, hey, uh, he even tries to, like, diffuse a bit. He's like... Uh, Oh, that's just my feelings. That was my feelings on that day that Orton was better than Kenny. Don't even give him that, Jim Ross. Don't even fucking give him that. Any day of the week, any day of the fucking month, Randy Orton is better than Kenny Omega. Just because a man <laughs> was given a couple of high awards from a fan called... 
uh, fucking Dave Meltzer just because Meltzer voiced his opinion that Kenny had a few good matches in Japan. That don't make him the greatest wrestler of all time. And what sick fucking world is are we living in? Dave Meltzer says Kenny is the best. People bow down and worship his opinion there. Yes, Kenny. Jim Ross voices his opinion, and his opinion is worth a lot more than fucking Meltzer's. Fuck. Jim Ross voices an opinion. No, Ross, you're wrong. You're wrong. Like, give me a fucking break there. Like, Jim Ross said in his, his recent quote as well, he says it's a subjective opinion. There's no right or wrong answer straight up. Like, it's subjective. You know what I mean? Like, but goddamn, you got to be realistic. You can't just turn around and say Mark Marrow, greatest wrestler of all time. This is almost like that. Saying that Kenny is better, is the greatest of all time. It's almost the same as saying somebody random like Mark Marrow is better. How can you say that Kenny is better than Hogan, let's say there? Because he's better in ring. What do you mean by in ring? Because he jumps more. Like Hogan in ring captured the hearts of millions and millions of fans. Hogan in ring had 30 million viewers for a Saturday night show. It was like it was, or I believe it was called WWE main event. It wasn't Saturday night main event. It was a show that they did back in the day called main event, I believe. 30 million fucking viewers there. How much do AEW get with their supposed greatest in the world? Hulk Hogan was in the ring selling, making faces, making people at home believe that wrestling was real. That's how good he, he was in the ring. It wasn't about spamming knee strikes, doing a Tiger Driver 98 it was about selling millions and millions and millions of pieces of merch. That's how good Hogan was in the ring. He stood in the ring. He looked at the fans. He looked at the camera. People pulled out their wallets and spent their fucking paycheck. That's how Hogan was good in the fucking ring. You know what I mean? Give me a fucking break. Kenny Omega better than Hulk? You fucking kidding me, you fucking goofs. How can people say that? Kenny better than Ric Flair? Fuck off, man. Fuck right off. You know what I mean? You can't say this. Like, in what way? Like, because he had a good match with a Japanese guy? Get the fuck out of here. Ric Flair used to wrestle an hour every night. And twice on Sunday, motherfucker, he did that shit every night. Kenny Omega is just ripping off these matches. Let's have a 45-minute to an hour match with false finish like the guys in the past used to do. You know, the real wrestlers used to do. We're just going to have a long match, do a couple false finish and just try to fucking rip off the formula of a five-star match. So any kind of midget jobber mongoloid can just rip off a formula from the past and Meltzer will give him five stars just because it takes place on the Indies. Fuck you, you fucking amateur hack. Fucking no good bastards, fuck. Omega's not in Bret Hart's league, Fuck no. Fuck no, he's not in Bret Hart's league. If somebody was good in ring, that was Bret Hart. In ring, Bret Hart was good. A seller. He would sell. He was believable as a wrestler. I know Americans don't like Bret because he talks shit about Americans and Shawn Michaels, stuff like that there. But in ring, you know, it was all a gimmick, this, though, but. 
You know, in ring Bret Hart, much superior to Kenny Omega. Like, come on, like these these new age fan like wrestlers. Somebody like Bret. Well, Bret, he has an ego there, but like some some of these old school wrestlers, they're gonna go out there and they're gonna say stuff like. Oh, Kenny was much better than I ever was. That's to put over the new generation there. That's because these old wrestlers, they want the young guys to succeed, stuff like this. But in no way, shape, or form is Kenny the greatest of all time. Never. Wrestlers that say that, that's to try to give back to the business. That's what that is there. Come on. Bret Hart thinks Hulk Hogan can't wrestle. Well, that's because Hogan wouldn't put him over to there. You know what I mean? Say, Bret, he, he, he has an ego. It is what it is. But well, he was better than fucking Kenny. Both of them were. Hogan met, might not be like a fucking gymnast, a gymnast or whatever, but... Wrestling isn't about fucking being in the gym doing flips. You know what I mean? It's about making money there. Fuck. Um, Robert Hurt, HBK could beat Omega. Fuck. In what in what dimension is Kenny better in ring than Shawn Michaels? Like Shawn Michaels, you don't get more fluent fucking. You know, Shawn Michael was just amazing in the ring. It is what it is. You know what I mean? This fucking little wannabe Omega don't come close to any of these guys saying that it's that that Kenny it's disgusting and it's sick. You got to be sick in the head to fucking say shit like this. You know what I mean? HBK versus Kurt. There's another guy, Kurt Angle. Who the fuck believes really that Kenny Omega is better than Angle? You got to be a fucking demented to believe shit like this. <clears throat> Give me a fucking break. Kenny Omega better than Undertaker? Do we really need to, to fucking go down? Who would say that? Who would have the guts, a, a respectable wrestling personality, like somebody on Twitter, a fucking goof on Twitter, is going to write Kenny better than Undertaker. But imagine like a wrestler, somebody like Flair or Jim Ross, somebody like Arn Anderson, let's say he works for AEW. I would like to, to see... If Arn Anderson had the guts to go on, on his little podcast there and to say that, let's say, that Kenny is better than Undertaker, who the fuck of these wrestlers would have the balls to say that? It's the minute that they would say this, they would lose fucking credibility. I mean, really, there. Who would fucking say that? Like... But they have the and when they claim that Kenny is the greatest of all time, that's basically what they're saying. Not only better than the guys we know, but better than the people from the past that we didn't get to see, like Bruno San Martino. Let's say eight years straight world heavyweight champ. People thought wrestling was was real back then. You know, Bruno was good enough to make people think wrestling was real and he was selling out the same area every fucking night. You know what I mean? Not 5,000 people at Daly's Place once every six months. He was selling out Madison Square Garden a bunch of times over at the same fucking arena. Are they going to say that? Are they going to say that? That Kenny is better than Bruno San Martino. Are they going to say that, these fucking losers? You know what I mean? Give me a fucking break. You know what I'm saying? Give me a fucking break, folks. So, 7 o'clock there, guys. The show's about to start. Um, Thank you all for watching this there. And uh, go subscribe to the new 
Wrestling Jesus channel there. I'm going to be going live on there by myself like I'm doing right now. I'm going to be going live on the Wrestling Jesus page. I just need to wait a fucking few days for being able to stream or whatever. You got to wait a couple days to be allowed to stream. So on that page... I'm going to give y'all live shows, reviews, the whole fucking nine yard there. Okay, I feel pumped. I feel like like motivated to make vids again. You know what I mean? So a lot of that shit is going to be posted over there. So thanks to you guys for watching. Like I said, you want more vids like this? Check out uh, the new channel, Eddie Double O One WJ Still Rules. Thank you, sir. Um, I might not be the same wrestling Jesus from back in the day. They're trolling, fucking starting shit, doing the drama there. But what I want to do these days is give y'all more fucking wrestling talk there. I don't want to go. And fucking make vids and just piss people off and fuck with people or whatever. <clears throat> I want to give y'all some real fucking wrestling talk there. Section 4 Wrestling, can't find it. Um, I posted a video here last night on Juggernauts there. Um, the link of that page, of the new page, is in the description. I think it's in the description of this live stream. I'm not sure there. Big Lazy, go smoke a big one for me, WJ. Funny you say that, because today I'm trying to stop quitting the pot there, ladies and gentlemen. They're trying to quit smoking the pot. It's day one today, folks, there. So that means I'm going to need shit to do to pass the time. And I'm going to be uploading some live streams for y'all to pass the time there. When I don't smoke pot, I have more energy, shit like this. I can give y'all some better fucking stuff there. So check it out. If you can't find it in the search, just... I posted a SmackDown review with a link to it. I posted a short vid with a link to it or whatever there. So check that shit out, ladies and gentlemen there. I'm back in fucking business. And I'm not going to just abandon this page or whatever there. I'm going to be doing live stuff with Jerry there. But um Myself, live by myself, most of that is going to be going on the Wrestling Jesus channel, shit like this. So subscribe today or whatever. Corpse, it will be hard to sleep on the first few nights. I, I tried to quit pot two, three times. The longest I ever want, went was a month. And every time it's the same thing. The first two, three weeks, I ain't sleeping. And when I do fall asleep, it's fucking heavy fucking nightmares. You know what I mean? Big ass fucking nightmares. Peter Spence, WJ is back, Jack. For real this time. That's right. For real. No more bullshit. No more closing accounts. The Wrestling Jesus is back. I want to do some live shit for you guys there. Sometimes just turn on the chat and talk with the people. You know what I mean? Just fucking turn it on, talk with the people, have some fun. You know what I mean? We're going to be doing some good shit on that page and on this channel too there. So have a good day, folks. Have a good night. Try to enjoy this pay-per-view there if you can there. If, if you want to pay for it, that's up to you there. I ain't going to pay for it, ladies and gentlemen. Not this time. Not this time there. J.C. Odin, any food reviews? I might do some on that page. You know what I mean? I'll do different stuff there. Piccolo, WJ, the people's champ. Robert Hurd, I support you, WJ. Thank you, sir. And we got Corpse. We're going to end it with Corpse here with a 
the big skull there, ladies and gentlemen. There are corpse in the house, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you, folks, for watching. Have a good night there. More content coming. A lot more content to coming in the future, folks. Until next time, peace. End broadcast. End the broadcast, question mark. Yes! Yes! Good night, ladies and gentlemen.